it's noon um, and I have checked off exactly zero of the things that I need to do today. When the day goes like this, you just wanna give up. But there's something I heard, and I don't know where I heard it from, about how everyone feels this way at some point. But the game changer between those who succeed and those who don't is what you do after you hit that point. So in this video, I'm mapping out a strategy that you can use to turn your burnout day around while also getting my life together because I have been eating bland noodles in bed. Just one more noodle. Okay, now I'm gonna get my life together. Starting with the thing I always do when I need to bounce back. It's something I started doing back in college when I was fighting crippling depression, but I didn't really know much about mental health, so I didn't know exactly what I was going through. I taped a piece of paper on my wall and made a list. Things that make me feel better. Then I listed every single thing I could think of that made me feel good when I have those bad days. Over the years, that list has changed, but I always have a list. So this is your first strategy for days like this. Make a list of what you need to do to get yourself out of it. I call this your bounce back toolkit. Okay, next you're gonna look at your list and just pick one thing that you can do right now. The first one on my list is put on a real outfit because normally I am not wearing anything cute. I'm just wearing like pajamas or workout gear or biker shorts just because I work from home. The only people that see me is John and Lemon, so I'm not too concerned about what I look like, but it always makes me feel better to actually feel put together, so let's do that. But researchers who were studying links between clothes and brain activity found scientific evidence that if you dress up, you're actually more productive. And for me, dressing up is just putting on a sweater. Okay, next, I wanna challenge you. You've done one thing on your list, amazing. How do you feel? Take note of that and then look at your list and pick one more thing. For me, something that feels actionable for the day is just getting sun on my face. And I also can do that while walking my dog Lemon, who is sometimes my reason for getting out of bed. So let's do that. I do this because it makes me feel better, yes, but it turns out there's also a sciencey reason why this is good for you. Like. Sunlight resets your body's sleep-wake cycle so you can sleep better and stay more awake during the day. Also, sun gives you a serotonin release and anytime you can get extra serotonin, do it. But there's something that always trips me up here. I honestly had such a good productive day yesterday. In fact, I went like above and beyond what a good day feels like for me. But when I feel like this, I go back to something that I once learned in one of Michelle B's YouTube videos. Essentially, you just have to accept that you're going to have slumps, you're going to struggle. And I think my personality type, I'm an Enneagram 3, just really struggles with that idea of, of that being true. Which is why you need step number two, which tackles this question. Why do some people succeed after they fail while others just continue to struggle? Researchers found that there was just one difference between those two types of people. The ones who succeeded learned more from their failure. So next time you feel this way, pay attention. What got you here? What are you feeling? How, how can you better care for yourself next time? The key is to learn from your bad days so you're better equipped to deal with them in the future. And one thing that includes is cutting out something that's gonna make you feel even worse. I'm an avid YouTube watcher and podcast listener. So sometimes I'll do that to try to get myself motivated. I had it in my calendar, or my planner if you will. I'm gonna squirt a little bit of sriracha. Can I look at me there? And it's more enjoyable. So for this, this might be combining the task with something else that's enjoyable. Like but when I'm feeling more fragile, this almost never makes me feel good, even if it's from a creator that I absolutely love. Because I just start comparing myself to them and then feeling bad about it. So step number three is to stop consuming content that makes you feel worse. But nothing is going to be more impactful than this next step in your strategy. And it's something I learned from researchers Emily and Amelia Nagoski. Back in ye olden times, your stressors weren't an inbox full of emails or a passive aggressive phone call from your mom. They were more visceral, like a freaking lion chasing you and trying to eat you. So back then there was a clear end to your stress. You either get caught by the lion and get eaten and die, 
or you don't and you're alive and you breathe a sigh of relief and you celebrate the fact that you're alive. But the problem is our bodies just can't tell the difference between being chased by a lion and having a really horrible work day. This is why the most important step in preventing burnout is completing the stress cycle in a way that your body understands. Moving your body. But it can be so hard to do that when all your energy is zapped. I know that I need to do that today and I really, 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 really don't want to. How are you supposed to jump on a treadmill when all you wanna do is curl up in bed and cry? But in the book Burnout, they argue that this is actually exactly what you need to do. Cause it's literally the only way that you can tell your body in a language it understands that everything is gonna be okay. So that being said, let's go to the gym. I know this is not the most popular opinion, but I happen to love going to the gym, even this gym, and it's a very Jimmy gym, if you know what I mean. I just like being around other people who like to work out and also just doing my little routine and wearing my little headphones. But it doesn't have to be the gym for you. And if you hate the gym, don't go to the gym, okay? All you need to do is, is move your body in a way that brings you joy. So if you're having a burnout day right now and you're watching this video, just pop your headphones on, go for a walk. You may not feel completely cured afterwards, but you will feel better because you're changing your brain chemistry. Hi, I was editing this and John said that I needed to add a fifth step and I always listen to him because he is my calmer half. And that is to give yourself some grace. That's step number five from my amazing husband. Sometimes it's 10 p.m. and you just need to go to bed and that's the end of it. Just, you know, sometimes your body just tells you when it's done. So listen to that and yes, give yourself grace on days like this. I really hope this was helpful for you. I know it was healing for me to make and I'd love to hear your tips and tricks when days like this happen to you in the comments.